tonight we have um, our speakers going to be talking to us about internships and um, there's been a lot said about internships over the last years and from let you know we're talking about the positive aspects of internships. <laughs> we're not going to talk about the negative so much um, at all I hope. Uh, so our three speakers tonight each represent different aspects of a, of a program. We've got um, um, Sue Carter is the editor of Quill Inquirer and where she oversees all aspects of the magazine's print publication and online platforms. And she also serves as the arts and idea editor for this magazine and the National Post columnist for Metro News. And in her position, she is responsible for hiring, management, and evaluate, evaluating um, interns. And then we have Piram Puth from uh, uh, University of Guelph Humber. And his portfolio includes overseeing the internships and placement process for more than 500 students annually in the media studies and justice studies um, programs. And uh, he's been doing this for five years, right? <coughs> five years. So, um, and then now we have uh, Kate Is Isley, yeah. right? And she has been an intern successfully. She's the editorial <laughs> assistant to the executive publisher, executive vice president at Penguin Random House Canada. She's had two internships, one at an independent publisher called Porcupine Quill, and the other in the editorial department at Random House. And she has a publishing certificate from Ryerson and a Bachelor of Arts from Queens. So each of our three speakers is going to talk about what they do, and then we can ask them lots of questions. So um, to sort of put it into the process that it happens, we're going to start with Haram, and then talk to, to Sue, and then to Kate. OK? And I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Let's go there. <coughs> Good evening. Okay, so I do have a few short uh, points to kind of talk about with regards to the University of Guelph Humber, um, and afterwards, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So, as Carolyn had mentioned, my name is Prom Huth, and I'm the current placement coordinator at the University of Guelph Humber. Um, how many of you here know what the University of Guelph Humber is? <laughs> Okay. We're a, um, so I'll start off with a unique institution in that students who attend the University of Guelph Humber receive an Honours Bachelor of Applied Arts and Media Studies um, from the University of Guelph, but they also receive a Media Communications Diploma from Humber College. So they, they get a two-in-one package in the span of four years. So with regards to internships, um, as Caroline had mentioned, um, Caroline had mentioned uh, I do manage the media studies students, so they are required to do internship as part as of the course requirements for graduation. So part of that component is 240 hours of internship, of internship, you know, of internship hours, I should say, going into their fourth year, so summer into their fourth year, or their final semester of the fourth year. So we have two opportunities for students. So it's typically in the summer semester, which ranges from May until. August, early August, and the other period is from January until end of April to early April, okay, depending on the academic year. So internships can be paid or unpaid, so some scenarios can include an hourly wage, a stipend, or an honorarium. Students do tend to go towards internships that are paid, however, there are some exceptions to that with regards to the type of experience that they're willing to um, gain, um, as well as the organization that they're hoping to be a part of. Okay, so those are some considerations that students do take in, in mind. So internship candidates and applicants should be required, as I mentioned, for it to be a internship, they must have completed it for academic credit. So I've had some students in the past who are just keeners and they completed an internship for academic credit in the summer and then they want to do an internship again for the winter semester because they are seeing all these amazing opportunities. Um, unfortunately, because we are mandated through the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities, students must be enrolled in, into the program and requires that they complete it for internship. So if they've already fulfilled that requirement for their degree component, they cannot do that internship again. Okay? So if it is a, as I mentioned, if it is a unpaid internship, the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities, this is a big piece for us at um, our university with regards to workplace insurance. Um, so ensuring that the student, while they're at the uh, while they're at placement or at their internship, for the 240 hours that they're there for, they're covered for workplace insurance. What that means is, after the 240 hours, they must stop at their internship or else they won't be covered for workplace insurance. And I know there are some pieces with this with regards to the employer side, um, as well as for the student as well. So 
I'm going to talk a little bit about the internship experience. So it really depends on the industry, but for media students, we encourage them to find opportunities that allow them to work on projects and campaigns that will help them to better build their portfolios. Um, so we do have a career placement portal where we connect with various employers and partners um, from Bell Media, um, Chorus Entertainment, Rogers, um, so some large ones, but we also have smaller organizations as well um, that post on their opportunities onto our career placement board. Our media studies program is very unique in that we have various streams. So some students may choose towards a public relations stream, some will go towards more of the broadcasting journalism side, um, others may choose to go towards the photography, image arts, or digital communication side. However, for internships with, our, with regards to our program, um, because we understand the media field is ever-changing and ever-growing and PR folks are now doing journalism jobs and journalists are doing PR jobs and vice versa, um, students, for example, who have declared an area of emphasis in public relations and found an amazing opportunity in a journalism you know, internship are more than allowed to pursue that. Okay? Um, if you're looking to hire an intern, um, the best piece is to have some structure. So, best piece of advice for internships, if you're looking to hire an intern, is to have some structure in place with regards to what are the expectations, what are their roles, what projects are they going to be doing, and taking away from that experience. Um, some pieces on how to get started. So, if you are interested in, or if you know of anyone that's interested in hosting an intern, um, employers um, or internship hosts can reach out to the institution. So depending on the institution, um, it may function under a decentralized or centralized system. So what that means is some organizations or some universities or colleges have a decentralized system where placements and internships are kind of managed through the academic school or the <coughs> faculty. However, um, at our university we have a centralized system, so all the programs um, with regards to internships and placements are managed through our placement department. Um, with regards to that, um, if you are, as I mentioned, interested in having interns as part of your organization or helping you out, um, reach out to the academic school and they'll be able to help you out with regards to setting something up or promoting any opportunities. Okay, and that's it. <laughs> at the Alt Weekly there as the arts and deputy editor and we would take in King's students, King's College students and we would often, it would be a lot of students who didn't want to leave Halifax for the month or couldn't afford to or whatever so oftentimes we'd have up to I think, six to ten interns at once for a month so that was quite the experience in terms of my first managing of interns <laughs> and one of the things I did learn which is interesting is what you were saying is that um, for them, and I found now at Quill too, is um, project-based uh, internships really work well um, in terms of having a specific project that they can really get involved in and feel like it's their own and their passion. Um, we used to have our interns, we would have three to four, they were three to four months each, and they would run, the program would run all year round. Um, they were paid sort of I wouldn't say under the table, but um, I was finding ways to pay them in terms of they would get an honorarium, but then also I would find freelance projects that they could do and, and have them build separately as well. So, um, but that all kind of came to an end uh, about two years ago um, when there was a little bit of an investigation going on into, in terms of um, the Walrus and Toronto Life and various publications. And so um, our uh, internship policy changed, so now we only accept um, students from university programs where it's part of their graduation requirements. So it's it's proven some new challenges, but we've managed to find, I think, a good balance um, now. So the challenge is that it's, they're generally only about 90 hours over a two month to six week, a six week to two month period. So you find that um, in terms of allowing somebody to immerse into an industry, because for us it's not just journalism, but it's also publishing too. So they're kind of getting thrown into everything at once. It's like here's everything about manage, you know, magazine production, and here's everything you need to know about the publishing industry. It's pretty hard to give somebody that over six weeks. But um, so there again, I think projects 
um, kind of help. But what we really try and do too is make sure that they have something that they can take away. So wherever we can give them bylines as much as possible. So it, even if things um, like um, doing research in the morning to do like a daily roundup of book news from around the world. And so it gets them on the websites and looking for stories and gives them just a broader sense of what's going on. And also gives, especially for new writers, a chance to you know, test out a little bit more writing. Um, we've had students that have like incredible journalism backgrounds where they've already done a degree in it, maybe now they're doing a publishing certificate, but we've also had English Lit students who this is their first time, and, and that can be a bit, a bit, a bit daunting too, is to, it's a different craft from writing a short story to all of a sudden being asked to go and interview a, you know, a publisher and, and structure a story. So we try and work as much as closely as possible with those students. Um, and it, it can be difficult, like it's a good reminder for me, I think as an editor too, to not treat them like another employee, because it is easy when everybody's so overworked to just be like, oh, here, just take this. And so it's, I think it's been, it's sort of a good slowdown and a check-in for us as well. Um, it, it does come up though that we do have students who, it's clear once they get there that all they really want to do is read books and they love books and they want to <laughs> review books and, and that's great. And our review editor has been very kind in terms of giving them the opportunity to test out writing a book review and um, see how that goes. And in fact, we have quite a few um, interns who are now freelance reviewers for us. So anyone who shows the aptitude certainly can, can continue to, to freelance for us afterwards. In fact, we have a King's College student who's coming in tomorrow to do a bunch of fact checking and image gathering for me, who was an intern a year ago. Um, and my editorial assistant right now is a former intern. So we definitely still are hiring from this program, so I think it's still valuable for people. And it probably doesn't pay as well as it used to, and they don't get as much time, I think, with editors as maybe they should, but I think it's still really a good opportunity. Um, I think it's important that everybody's happy. I think the screening process in the beginning is still like, I still like to treat it as an interview at the beginning like it was a job, even if it is only for six weeks. I've learned that over time too, that you know you want them to have a good experience and, and certainly fit into the team. And I think skill sets, you, you get to know pretty quickly um, what's gonna work and what isn't. Um, and the other thing too is, you know, we've had a lot of students not just go into journalism afterwards, but also, into the publishing industry. So um, right now I'm dealing with, I'd say about three or four different publicists that at one point were Quill and Choir uh, interns. So that's really nice too, because they get that experience of going back and forth. And they, they understand what we want to, which is really great. And we get special <laughs> Um But yeah, I think that that's about it. But I think it's, um, it's still a good program. We don't do it as much as we did before. Um, we probably, I have arrangements with about two or three different schools right now, and so I know that at a certain time of the year that, that that's gonna come up and that I am gonna have the students so I can prepare ahead of time. But for us, just having a full succession of six-week interns the entire year just isn't, it, I don't think it's, it would be a, a great fit for us right now, but three times a year, I think it's become a good balance. So that's about it, so thank you. Actually, a lot of what I've got here relates to things both of you said, so hopefully it will be helpful to everyone. Um, folded it in this way that it keeps coming off. <laughs> okay, uh, so my name is Kate Isley, and I am the editorial assistant to the executive publisher, the executive vice president of Penguin Random House Canada. Um, and I've been there for about uh, two years now, but three years ago I was an intern. So I have lots of experience in that. Uh, I studied English literature at school, and uh, when I graduated, I knew I wanted to get into the publishing industry. I am an avid reader, I have a passion for language, I enjoy thinking critically about narrative structure, so publishing seemed to be the right place for me. Um, and everyone I talked to, you know, thinking how am I gonna get into this industry, everyone said I had to get an internship. If I wanted to get a job, I had to be an intern first. So I got my first internship when I was um, just out of school. It was the fall of 2011, and it was at the Porcupine's Quill, an independent literary press based in Erin, Ontario, run by Tim and Elka Inkster. Uh, at the Quill, I did a little bit of everything from updating the website to running social media, 
uh, drafting cover copy, writing grant applications, and a really special thing about the Quill, it's one of the only publishers in Canada that still makes all of its own books by hand. So if I was lucky, I got to go up to the shop and watch the making books. And when I was really lucky, Tim actually let me help him make the books, so that was really cool. Uh, to this day, there are uh, some books out there that have end papers that are hand-tipped by me. Pretty cool. Um, and there are even some copies of Armory Schaefer, a Canadian composer's uh, memoir, that have the, the covers were adhered to the book by me. <laughs> so you, you put the book in this machine, and at the press of a button, the book zips from one end to the other, and it, it goes over this roller that's turning in a tub of hot glue, and then gets pressed into its cover, and then it gets dropped into this basin, and you have to be there to catch it, otherwise it will smack the bottom of the basin, and the glue will be disturbed, and the book's ruined. So you're, just, you're, you're catching books. Um, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, so it was a great place to learn, and I was there for a little over a year. Uh, and the Porcupine Quill cannot be more different than where I went next, which was Random House of Canada, before it became Penguin Random House Canada. Um, so that's where I interned next. Uh, I secured an internship in the editorial department at the Knopf Random Canada Publishing Group in January 2013. And there I worked checking pages, printer's proofs, uh, pr proofreading covers and jackets, uh, drafting paperback cover copy, and pulling quotations from major media for the quotes database. So a little bit of everything. And after five months, I secured one of the most highly coveted things in the Canadian publishing industry, which is an entry-level, full-time, permanent position. <laughs> Got the job, that was a very big deal. Uh, so now, over two years later, I am still working at Penguin Random House. Uh, in my time at the company, I've had the most incredible opportunities from sitting in on an editorial discussion with a journalist who lived in Syria only a few years before the outbreak of war, to finding my name in the acknowledgments of a new book by my literary idol, pretty big one for me. Um, everything I've accomplished, everything I've done, all goes back to the young, determined woman in the 18th century storefront of the Porcupine's Quill catching books when I was an intern. I couldn't have got where I am today if I hadn't been an intern first. So, I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, how do internships help people find jobs, uh, what makes an internship great, what makes an internship awful, and what should we as industry professionals do to protect publishing hopefuls from bad experiences. So first I thought I'd talk a little bit about how my internship at Random House turned into a job. So I started interning at the Knopf Random Canada Publishing Group under uh, vulnerable publishers Louise Dennis and Ann Collins. My supervisor was their dedicated, talented, and driven associate editor, Amanda Lewis, who's still at the company today, now as editor. Uh, she was a great supervisor to me. She gave me a clear sense of what was expected of me as an editorial intern. She made herself available to me to answer questions and offer support, and she sought out interesting projects for me to do on the side. So a bit of what both of you were talking about, about making sure intern interns know what is expected of them, making sure they have support, making sure they have interesting projects. Uh, kind of one-offs they can take away with them. So one project I got, uh, which was really interesting, was working with one of the publishers on a lead fall title. It was on fiction, history, an exciting exposition of new information that had only surfaced in the last year that completely changed the story of one of World War II's bloodiest battles. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, as with most histories, there were a lot of photographs to be considered for inclusion in the book's photo inserts, and the publisher needed someone to help her organize the photo selection. So that's how I ended up sitting at the table in Penguin Random House's largest boardroom with photographs of grisly battle carnage all around me. I got the job to help her out. Uh, but working on the book gave me more than just terrible images I'll never be able to get out of my mind. It also helped me get my first job. Halfway through the project, an admin assistant position opened up within the company, and I became the recipient of a really, really lovely recommendation from the publisher I've been working with. And that recommendation launched me to the shortlist of candidates and in the end got me the job. And in a weird twist of fate, it's that publisher that I now work for today as editorial assistant. So the fact remains, had I not had the chance to work with her on the project, she never would have been in the position to offer me a recommendation and I wouldn't be here tonight talking to you about how I got a job in publishing. 
So when people ask me how I leverage my experience into a job, I usually just say right place, right time. And that's definitely part of it. But I wouldn't have gotten here if it weren't for the magic musts of internships, some things that make them great, make them successful. Uh, the first must is having a great supervisor. <coughs> Having a supervisor that regularly checks in with you and is responsible for managing your workload means that there's someone there to oversee your successes. Instead of being exiled to the mailroom or marooned into a cubicle, there's someone there who sees your achievements and is then in a position to communicate those achievements to the rest of the company. That makes a big difference. It means you're not just there chipping away at work, you're actually building something. Uh, another must is being offered the opportunity to take on challenging projects. Something, this is something I feel quite strongly about. I think this is what separates a mutually beneficial internship from something that could be just basically free labor, which is questionable. Um, so instead of only doing time consuming tasks that can be repetitive and let's face it, really boring, I was given the opportunity to take on this exciting project organizing photo material that actually appeared in a book. And that was only one of the exciting projects I was asked to do on the side. The extra assignments gave me a chance to showcase my dedication, my organizational skills, and also put me in the way of the senior and influential people in the company, which is really important. And there's one last magic must um, <coughs> to ensuring your time as an intern is worth your while. And this one has nothing to do with your supervisor and everything to do with you, so any potential interns in the audience tonight. Uh, the last must in my books is keeping your chin up. Uh, being an intern is really hard. You get asked to do things that are time consuming and repetitive. You get thrown into social and professional situations where you usually feel really far out of your depth. Um, but at the end of the day, being an intern is an opportunity. Uh, you have access to people you would never have access to otherwise. You get to see processes you would otherwise never see. And it means that you get to enter an industry you otherwise never have access to enter. So having a good supervisor helps a lot, but it's really up to you to make sure that you make the most of your internship. This can take many forms, but it's a chance for you to consider what makes you unique. What do you bring to the table that no one else does? I guarantee there's something for everyone in this room. You may just have never thought about it before. For me, it was writing a series of articles about being an intern for the Editors Association of Canada's digital publication, The Editors Weekly. Having been an intern for almost two years between The Quill and Random House, I certainly had the experience. Uh, I also enjoy writing and I'm a critical thinker, so writing a blog was perfect for me. I was referred to the editor of the blog by my substantive editing instructor, Rosemary Shipton, and my series ran for a little under a year, and during that time saw me go from intern to full-time permanent. The series is actually still securing the opportunities because that series is the reason I got asked to speak with you guys tonight, so it's really good. Uh, so in closing, if I can impart any wisdom to everyone in the audience tonight about being an intern and about turning that internship into a job, it would be to strive and keep striving. It's not always easy and it's not always fun, but it's a chance to showcase yourself and your unique abilities. Uh, don't sell yourself short and keep an open mind. And if I can provide any insight to publishing professionals here who hire and work with interns, it would be to remember that an active supervisor and a supportive hand makes all the difference to an intern. We're really lucky in this industry to have so many people eager to offer their minds and hearts to our endeavors, and I think that we have a responsibility to protect and respect them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any good questions? We're going to ask some questions. Anybody have any? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, my question, my first question anyway, was for Sue. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about how you get interns now three times a year. You started yeah. with waves for about 90 days, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, 90 hours. 90 hours. Yeah. Months at a time. Two months. Yeah. And would you want them for more? Do you sometimes feel like the two months just isn't enough time for them or for you? It, it, it's really tough to have that short amount of time. And so, um, and yeah, I, and it took a while to find what that balance was because at first I think I had, oh, because I was thinking about doing projects and I was like, oh, this would be great. And I, and I, I think I kind of. Got, we got a little ambitious the first time because we were looking at a research project and we realized once we got into it, it was like, 
there is no way that anybody could do this in that amount of time. And they did a fan, the two interns they had at the time did a fantastic job, but um, it really wasn't enough time. So we try and keep it really short and deadline driven. And then also try and balance that with some day-to-day -day things. Like I don't, I want them to also get the sense of what it's like to work day to day on a magazine. So some of the things we still get them to do is um, fact checking for the um, and co some proofing and copy editing, and then writing for the daily for the blog and that sort of thing. Because I don't want them to feel like they're completely cut off and everything. Um, but yeah, if I could get them for a little bit longer, that would be great. And so hopefully we can find a way to find, as you say, a mutually beneficial relationship that you know, maybe works a little bit better. Um, this one's for Katie. Uh, I did an internship and was part of my school program also, and I was lucky enough to get in with a publisher, and started off doing some of the repetitious kind of boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right near the end of it, um, I did get to do copy edit, and I got hired to do freelance in the copy editor, which was great. To get a paid internship, um, I did the school one, which the two of you spoke about. Is yours? oriented too because I've heard Random House has paid internships, yeah. not school markets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both the internships I had were paid. Um, the internships at Random House were all paid. It's an honorarium. And um, I got it through, um, not not as part of my certificate from Ryerson, but I got it through Ryerson in that um, all the major publishers advertise with Ryerson. There's a listserv and these internship notices go out and then you can apply for them. It's not part of the program, but the program facilitates setting up the publisher with um, the students. Is there a certain time of the year that they um, Oh no, internships are happening all the time. Yeah, yeah, we're, we have we have a lot of interns. Every department has an intern or two. So it's, it's a three month cycle and every department's on a different cycle. So yeah, and now is probably a good time. <laughs> it's always a good time. Um, hi, I'm Ann, and uh, I'm going to George Brown for the certificate. Um, and George Brown offers, they, they have, um, I guess, a relationship with certain uh, companies that will take an intern. But literally, I think right now there's only about six listed on the website. And I just wondered if how, I, I imagine that Toronto is filled with publishers big and small, and I just wondered how you get access to that information, and uh, is there a website or a list or a directory or? Not something? that I'm aware of. Um, I, again, I got all of the information about what was available through my school, and um, it, it was a pretty quick turnover. I always found every week there'd be a different internship or so. So sometimes there'd only be six available at one time, but mm -hmm. I find it would refresh quite frequently. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long you've been on that mm -hmm. on that bulletin, but there, yeah, there's a lot of publishers I always looking for people to help. I think too. Um, also, it, if you're looking for a specific. It's good to have specific maybe publications or publishers in mind that you're interested in because most of them have. I know that we do, um, and I know all of our sister publications, um, say at St. Joe's Media, like Toronto Life and Fashion Magazine, all of them have internship information on their website and when they're looking. It's pretty specific about when they're looking for them and when the application deadlines are. So that's another way of going at it. It just seems like such a huge world out there and how do you narrow it down, how do you know which magazine might have an office in, in Toronto, maybe some of them are only in Montreal. Right? Um, yeah, I have a question for you, what kind of process, like, let's say I'm a, I'm not, but let's say I'm a publishing company and I okay. want to be on the program. What kinds of things do you request from the company? So one of the things that we request from the company is first just to you know tell us a little bit about the organization. What is the what are the roles and responsibilities of the intern that they're hoping to kind of take on board and the time frame that they're hoping to um, have them on board by. Um, I think a lot of it for many new um, internship hosts is really getting them 
into the mind frame of some of the legalities that um, come with internships, especially at the university and college level with regards to workplace insurance and ensuring that the student is enrolled in a program versus someone who is just doing an internship for the experience side but doesn't need it for academic credit. Um, so when it comes to that piece, it's really a dialogue about here are you know, requirements for academic credit for the students to complete the internship. Um, is this within your time frames? What projects are you looking to kind of take on board? And that exchange. And once that exchange happens and they, and they um, you know, come to a conclusion whether or not, you know, this is the right fit for us as well as, you know, uh, for your organization, then we kind of start the process of providing them with an account on our career placement board. Um, and then we also do um, email blasts out through our listserv as well for students who are looking for internships. And then do you pre-screen the students? Like let's say you've got, I don't know, 10 that are interested in a particular position. Do you then go through those 10? And no, the, our process is very, um, it's very, it's a competitive process. So it's very similar to if students were to be looking for jobs. Um, so we work with the employer or the internship, internship post to post that opportunity and to promote the opportunity to provide guidelines and feedback on that. However, it is up to them um, with regards to how they want to proceed, whether they want to shortlist it based on the amount of applications that they receive or they want to phone interviews or have them come in um, for in-person interviews. Um, and we help them through that process if they, if they require it, um, we're there as a resource. However, it is up to their discretion how they want to pursue that. Um, at that point, we don't want to, um, I don't want to say baby the, the candidates, but uh, the students are in their fourth year um, and they will be graduating after that semester. So um, for students who are unaware of how to go through that process, we're there as a resource to help them to go through mock interviews, how to do outreach if they're looking for a particular internship, um, because sometimes uh, they may really want this organization or very want this um, unique experience and the postings that we have are not available um, to them. So we got them through the process of how to look for something that is beneficial to them and how to start that process and where we fit into that conversation without you know, kind of taking over that conversation, but helping support them in that conversation. So for example, if a student wants to go into publishing and there was the new of an organization that they really want to be a part of and we don't have a partnership with them already, um, they would, we would guide them through the process of how to do outreach um, whether it's cold calling, reaching, you know, contacting organization, searching on the website, for example, and at that point, you'll either have two, one or two responses. One would be, um, that sounds great, tell me a little bit more about your program. Um, in that case, we'll coach the student how to kind of navigate having that conversation, um, but we are also there on the back end. So if the host or the person who is looking to hire an intern is on a wants a little bit more information, we're that contact person. And that's where that initial um, piece comes in, where we will kind of take over from there and help bridge that for the student. I think for us, um, the schools that we deal with right now, it's often the head of the department or the school that, like the, the dean at, um, at King's College, he, he emails me and he's like, here's two students who I think would be perfect for you. And I've had a long relationship with him, so I, I trust him in terms of like people. And they usually yeah. are like pretty good. And same with Ryerson, it's, it's the same thing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of nice that way to have that, yeah. build that relationship. Yes. But I've also had, I was speaking at, um, I think it was a publishing class at Humber, and I had, a, um, and it was about, not about internships at all, but then afterwards a, a student just sent me a thank you note, which is really, it's like, Whoa, wow, okay. <laughs> and and then followed up later with like asking about internships mm -hmm. and, and her skills it didn't quite match because she was looking for something that was really about social media and we didn't really have anything for her. Mm -hmm. But definitely if ever anything came up or she was, was needed to be recommended somewhere else, I definitely would because she definitely stood out just in the way she presented herself in the mm -hmm. class and then followed up and then followed up again. It was great. So mm -hmm. can I ask you? <laughs> um, what's the interview process like? Actually, so I'll ask you: Do you like when when someone's coming in new? Do you put them through like an interview process, just like a job as well, or, or do you just bring them in? As you were saying, they were recommended. Yeah. Things it's a little bit different. We do a phone interview because they're usually in Halifax at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and Ryerson, I try and meet. Well, I definitely meet with them ahead of time. I think um, I've changed a little bit with that in in terms of. Um, didn't always work with that specific program in that um, 
they would send me a student and I would just basically meet with them and be like, yeah, okay, this should be fine. But now I realize it is good to get a couple students in and do interviews. But certainly in the past when we had a full year program, it was, you, we would bring in three or four students for, for an interview and, and go through the process like we would any um, anybody else really. Did you get, did you go through an interview process, Kate? Like, what time? Mm -hmm. What was it like? Um, well, I didn't get interviewed for the first job so much, um, the independent press, because they were publishing cowboys, and they just didn't go <laughs> that way. Um, but for the random house job, yeah, I was, I was interviewed. Um, and it, it was like a, it was a casual formal interview, I'd say. And at the end of it, I was offered the job. So in that way, it was quite casual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he gave me a book, like, you're like, that book, take it. And I was like, what? Can I really just take this book? Um, but it was, it was an interview process. And I, I see my colleagues, Hire interviews now. Sorry, hire interns now, and they they get a group of three women from our company, and they interview together, so they can talk about it after and share opinions. So, seriously. And what about when it's all over? Like, what's the evaluation process like? Too? Um, it now it's uh, back to whatever the particular school has a usually has their own evaluation process that goes through. Um, I'm not sure, I need to find out exactly how it works because I bumped into one of the very few interns that I had that I, I don't think that this was necessarily in her career path right now and I thought that maybe she needed some additional training um, in, in journalism, um, which I set on the evaluation form and I guess she got that um, feedback directly and so I didn't realize that she was going to get that feedback directly until I bumped into her on the street so that was a little bit of an awkward <laughs> <Yeah>. moment <laughs> but I think it was good but I, I, and I stand by it um, but it usually is they want it, it, it I guess it's like a performance review and a job it's basically the same thing and, but again it, it, it is really difficult after 90 hours or you know six weeks to really evaluate somebody so um, it's a gentle Process. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the program? Do get, you get feedback from the employer? This is what I want to know. Yeah. I wonder. For, so I mentioned the centralized and decentralized system. Um, so we, we work on a centralized system. So we actually work with faculty members who are the course instructors. So they're the ones that actually receive the evaluations. Um, however, there other institutions have it where the faculty member is the placement person, where they're promoting those opportunities, where it's um, it's in, in that kind of dynamic. Um, with ours, we troubleshoot if there are any concerns throughout the process. Um, we you know, mitigate any problems that arise during internships to, to both the employer and the student. Um, at the end, the employer is encouraged, they're connected with the faculty member, um, and they're encouraged to go over their performance um, with the student. So you know, it's typically a short two to three page evaluation. Um, Things such as like attention to detail, punctuality, professionalism, communication skills, like those you know core competencies, um, and they're encouraged to sit down with the student and actually have that conversation with them with regards to you know what their strengths or what the areas of improvements were, um, and then the employer sends it directly to the faculty member, and it's a, a large chunk of the grade is based off that. So I believe it's forty to fifty percent of our institution. <laughs> um, just with the random house internship, how long is that? There's three months. Oh, is it yeah, months? yeah. Is always. it full time each day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Though um, I have heard stories about like different arrangements being worked out. Um, if, for example, if a, if a student or a hopeful can't can't do full time, it's actually very interesting. If I can not have a question, but make an observation <laughs> that um, our publishing. Our company, the internships are so different than what mm -hmm. I'm hearing from both of you because they're not affiliated with the school. Mm -hmm. um, so there is no formal feedback process for interns at all. And when I was an intern, I, I made my supervisor have feedback sessions with me because I thought well, this is how you improve or how you engage. Mm -hmm. um, and then just another example of how great my supervisor was at the end of the process, instead of her giving us feedback, she asked us to give her feedback. Filled out a little form about what we liked about the internship and how it worked, and, but that's not a that's not it mandated by the company. That's just mm -hmm. Amanda Lewis being a wonderful <laughs> insights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the 
question of like training came up just now, and that's something I'm looking at possibly doing a publishing certificate or some components thereof. Um, and I was just wondering, this is kind of a question for anyone that feels they have something to say. Um, how important is having a publishing certificate in terms of being able to secure an institution? Like, is it basically a kind of unspoken prerequisite, or yeah, do you tend to take people from all sorts of different backgrounds? Or I would say, um, I can jump in, that getting the full certificate is definitely not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but taking a few classes is hugely helpful, and just because of the, the listserv, the magical listserv, I feel like <laughs> I'm talking about, um, if, you, if you're not getting updates on what internships are available from a school, you just you won't get them. Mm -hmm. You just won't get them. You won't know what's happening. Um, and you, in, in publishing in particular, you have to be part of an institution to receive those updates. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get a job in the industry, you have to have an internship. Like, um, it's just, it's a, it's a fact of the way it is. It doesn't necessarily make sense. Like I knew a young woman um, who had a lot of experience. She just got a job. This is a, this is a half story. Um, <laughs> she just got a job. Um, but she had a lot of experience uh, publishing in Ireland. She had like nine years publishing experience. And she came to Canada and has been here for two years. And the first year was like, I'm just going to get a job. You know, like I've got experience. I'm going to get a job. Um, and then finally, after a year, thought, internship and she did it and she interned with our company um, and she's lovely and wonderful and so talented and smart and she just got a job uh, like two months ago mm -hmm. and because she was an intern because <laughs> it's, it's just about it's, it's about being the right place at the right time it's about people getting to know you um, there's just it's such a small industry and there's so many candidates and it just it just helps okay. so yeah I'd say to you copy a new class Camilla Blake was great mm -hmm. cool yeah, I think it's the skills so much more so than actually like having that specific certificate um, that doesn't uh, bother me as much. I think um, you know, for me, like I we've had students that you know maybe they worked on the school they weren't necessarily full time, but they worked on like their school newspapers mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so as long as I can see their writing skills and, and some other you know and other things, and I think like. Um, Especially when you're dealing with journalism and, and books journalism too, it's nice when you see people who have a broad knowledge of different things as well too, because I think it makes them better reporters and and, um, um, and just yeah um, maybe uh, able to go out and talk to different types of people as well. So. I can't speak specifically to the certificate piece or the program piece, however. Um, if you're looking at any further schooling or any type of program, do look at what are their academic requirement pieces. So ensuring that they do have an internship or a co-op or some piece there where you have to do it for academic credit. Um, because a lot of the organizations that we work with um, are organizations who have stopped taking interns the past few years because of the whole hoopla in the media with regards to internships. Um, so now they're kind of coming back to it because they're like, we do need them. There is value in that, um, in that process. Um, however, whereas before where they kind of like ran internships independently and you know people applied and it was very competitive, now they're more willing to work with institutions, um, universities, colleges to ensure that the correct protocols are in place um, for those interns. Um, so if you are interested in you know internships to whatever capacity, ensuring that the program that you do end up choosing um, has that as part of the requirements. Okay. Yeah, I know even like when we ha have our internships come in they have to bring in proof mm -hmm. from from their school that it's actually part of their academic requirements mm -hmm. so that form has to be filled out by the school mm -hmm. in order for them to you yeah. know take part so mm -hmm. it's it's They're more it yeah it is um, and it's more for the internships that are unpaid with regards to the internships that are paid you could be you know it, it's really dependent on the organization whether or not they want to take you on as a paid intern so hourly paid right. um, to the capacity of whether or not you're involved in a program or not um, however, it's an unpaid internship, so that includes, if you're not on the payroll, so if you're receiving a stipend and honorarium, um, most organizations now will require that you are part of using it for academic credit. Yeah, because that's something I was wondering about as well, is like how many of the random house type ones are there, and how many of the, you have to be a program type. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I get the sense from what you guys just said that it's, mm -hmm. the majority of them are like course requirements. 
Yes, uh, on our side I can speak for, for that. Um, however, I've had students who were successful um, in doing, let's say, a paid internship. Um, it's the term, paid internship, <laughs> but technically it was a paid job. So they weren't violating the labor you know, pieces because they were getting paid an hourly wage. So they're on their payroll. Um, some organizations would choose to you know, have that term intern still in there because they want to show that it's a learning contract or a learning opportunity. Um, and some would choose to uh, exclusively have the opportunity for folks who need it for credit. And some will um, be more than happy to have that for any other candidate based on qualifications. Right. You have a question? Strangely enough, the question I have disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, what I wanted to ask was for Sue, so you've been doing this for a while, I guess. You've seen, you've been seeing interns over many years. What have you noticed? What changes have you noticed, positive or negative, in terms of the interns and what they expect and how they perform and what they, how they are? I don't think I noticed a real difference actually. I think um, it, it really, it's, it's as you say, I think it's up to the individuals how they decide that they're going to um, treat the internship. And I was just talking to the art director tonight, um, who's also for, started off as an intern doing on the, the visual side of it. And we were just talking about um, the fact that we could tell with an intern that even if they didn't come here, they're going to be fine, you know, like they're good, this person's great, just by the way that they treated it. And, and you know, I heard from an intern today who I knew was going to be fantastic and she um, got a job outside of after interning for us um, at Harlequin and doing some proofreading and now she's applying for a promotion in the copy editing department. So um, she definitely was somebody that I could I knew right away it was going to make it into publishing, and so um, I don't. I don't think there has been any changes. I think it's harder for them because they don't get that immersion into an industry so much anymore. I mean, I think it's great. I mean, in my dream, I would love to have, for instance, what the Walrus has, which is like a six-month fellow paid fellowship. I mean, to me, that would be like such a luxury to be able to have somebody for that period of time. And, um, but uh, not in the immediate future. But. I think uh, we'll continue having interns. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Well, thank you very much.